My name is Patrick McCarthy. I'm a producer and project manager at Lightning Attic Records. Day to day, we do things like you know, scanning jackets, working with archivists to get tape transferring done, uh, finding the tapes, uh, finding original copies of records that might be really rare, expensive albums so that we can scan them. And I mean, it's usually stuff like that. It's a lot of talking to people, trying to track down things. It can be a like detective work, honestly. Sometimes we've we've hired private detectives in the past to find artists and things like this. But uh, for example, like our Lee Hazelwood archive series, when we originally licensed that music, the the rights holder said that they didn't have any tapes, and then we were just like, "There's got to be tapes." Like this was a, they did tons of records, and there's got to be tapes somewhere. And then after a couple of years of digging around, talking to different people. Matt, the owner of Light in the Attic, Matt Sullivan, found out that the publisher might actually have a stock of tapes. And so one, and they were in North Hollywood, we're in LA, they were just near us. And we drove over there and I remember we walked in this room and it was a warehouse room and there was like hundreds of tapes, like Cowboy in Sweden, all the Lee Hazelwood albums and stuff that no one ever knew about. So sometimes it's like that, sometimes it's as simple as if we're licensing an album from a Universal or a Sony, we can request tape, tape, the tape transfers. And then sometimes it's, uh, you know, we've gone into people's garages and you put your masks on and your gloves and we're digging through stuff and you find, uh, like we have some records coming out next year that I can't say right now, but we found some pretty amazing stuff that nobody ever knew existed in someone's garage in West Hollywood, so. I mean, it's, it's fun, but it's because, I don't know, we, we like challenges, it's fun to just, I mean, there's definitely a few records that we've spent years still trying to find tapes and someone says, oh, I, have you tried this person, this person? It's like, you always hit these dead ends and eventually, you know, you, you, you did what you, did, you could do, you know, so sometimes you have to go from vinyl or other sources. Sometimes it might be a DAT tape that someone transferred. Um, fly. <laughs> um, so it's, uh, it kind of depends, but it's, it's not like the best part of the process for sure. I, I, I more enjoy the, after we get them transferred and listening to it, and because sometimes you hear, this, you hear things that you, know, you never heard before from original pressings. You can hear different frequencies and there might be other songs. Uh, like when we did our Terry Reed uh, River reissues, we were just gonna reissue the Terry Reed River album and then we found out that there were tons of unreleased tracks and that's when we decided to do an unreleased version. It does increase the price because you're adding another record and we always do the gay, usually do gayful jackets with two pockets so it's like you could just put another record in there but it can add the cost to it. Um, it also adds the cost for mechanical royalties so I don't think everyone understands that you pay a royalty for every song on a record so if you have a single record with 10 songs and then you make it a double with 10 more songs, that's 20 songs. So it can increase the cost per unit. Um, and we, we, you know, everyone has a breaking point with the price structure. So, I mean, for us, we like to keep our records affordable. We're not, we're not trying to just sell to extreme, you know, hi-fi wealthy people. We're trying to make our rec records accessible. So um, it is a concern. And I think there have been times when we definitely thought about, oh, should we do this as a double or a single? Because it could really affect the price per unit for the end, end consumer. So it's, it's a concern. But ultimately, we, if, the, if the music is great, we'll do it as a 10 LP set. You know, it's just like, this is the way it is. It's great, so. Um, well, there's a lot. Uh, we're, we're, I mean, I don't say that we're not transparent about the process, but it's, uh, it's just because we, we don't reveal what we're doing a lot of times because we don't want to tell people we're working on this record until we're ready to tell people. But I think people don't really understand that the, the time it takes, I mean, we'll work on records for, I mean, at the, at the minimum three years, usually longer, I and mean, some records take seven years. Our Japan archive, archival series, we went to Japan three or four times to license things. I mean, just the licensing sometimes can take years and I think people should understand that, you know, there's a lot of care that go into these things, you know, from the remastering to 
you know, sometimes we have to recut lacquers four or five times and go through many rounds of test pressings. And that at the end of the day, we're doing all this because we care so much about the record. We want it to be the best it can be and exceed, hopefully, those ex expectations. So it's just, you know, if you get a record and it's like, oh, it's, this is, you know, you're not happy. It's like, we really take that seriously. And so, and I especially, I mean, I've called customers and worked with them on their problems. And it's, everyone's gonna, you're gonna have a problem here and there, you know, it's the way it is. It's a, vinyl is an imperfect format. And so I think people should realize that, you know, you're gonna get this thing. It's, it's a needle dragging across plastic. You know, everything goes into making it as perfect as possible, but out of a thousand records, there, there could be two or three that have a problem, you know, and we just, we, we'll try to fix it when we can, so. Uh, I would say a lot of times our QCing is someone reaches out and says, oh, this is a problem, and we'll, we firstly ask, we have a kind of uh, a little, you know, FAQ kind of thing. But we'll ask like, oh, have you checked, have you checked the playback on other systems? Um, how recent has your, been, your needle been replaced? How's your tone arm aligned? And not to, like sometimes people take offense, like, oh, I have a, you know, I get it. Um, it's, but it's still, we have to ask those questions to try to see, because it does happen where someone says, oh yeah, I watched a video on YouTube of how to align my tone arm. And, it was doing this and you know someone if they say oh my record's skipping I mean, it's very rare to have records skipping it would you know it would be on every record if a record skips so it's a usually that's a tone arm thing or there might be something stuck on the plastic on the on the record itself but you know it's definitely it's it's trial and error it's send us a video oh, okay we might think it might be this you know try this setup and yeah obviously always having a better setup is going to make your vinyl sound better. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have a bunch of cool stuff. We just had the, um, the final, maybe, in our This Heat archival series. We've done three outs, three studio albums. We did three more archival releases. Uh, our Japan archival series is continuing with uh, Hiromi Hasono's albums. We just, we've done five so far. Um, we have upcoming, of bunch of more archival series stuff from Japan that I can't really say yet but I will say that they're really cool and they're gonna have some really deluxe packaging that's something that we're we're you know our standard releases we're really kind of making them more unique and doing things to them so we're really excited about that but we're testing out some of these new things to make sure they work and are, are you know look great we, we work with a couple print vendors we use a place called Imprint in Florida that's really great um, and they're they're totally like Stoughton they're like family you know and you call them and you're just like I have this idea and I mean Stoughton will never turn you down they'll just say let's try it so and that's what's great with working with you know these kind of creative vendors like that right now we are pressing at RTI we have a bunch of records at Erica we have records at GZ um, we have done records with Furnace um, we're kind of in like five places right now. Memphis, record pressing, we've done some records there. Um, you know, it's kind of, we used to be of the mind to just do everything at one place, but it's just, it's hard to, with the production schedules, to keep all your eggs in one basket. So we kind of spread things out a lot. And we really like working with RTI. And I mean, all the plants are great. It's just like kind of figuring out where, where this project can go or where that project can go, especially with uh, turn times and everything. A reissue record that I really want to do. Let me think about that for a second. Um, I really would love to do, oh, I really wanted to do, there's a couple. Uh, I really wanted to do um, the first Ministry album is with Sympathy. Uh, I think it's been disowned by Al Jurgensen, but uh, I, I think it's a really good record and um, it's such a cool cover, but I think someone's reissued it, but you know, that and uh, uh, the Blitz, Blitz band, they're an oi band from the UK, they have a record called The Killing Dream, that's, that's like this kind of Joy Division, they were like a punk oi band and they made this like electronic kind of Joy Division record and it's like super cool, I'd love to do that someday, so we'll see. <laughs>